What was your mindset like going into that game, first off, going into the ACC tournament? I mean, it's funny. To me, it kind of seems like how the guys probably played in the league this year when they were in the bubble out in, you know, Orlando. You know, uh, we went there with all distractions, you know, out of the way. And so my whole mindset is, you know, you know how it is, man, playing in school, you got people calling for tickets and, you know, all that, you know what I'm saying? Just cut the phone off and just, you know, really lock in, you know, it just really felt like an a AAU tournament that you feel like, you know, this is going to be a big exposure or being at an elite camp or whatever, or, you know, right. like the guys in the league this year playing in the bubble, you know, that's kind of was where I was at, you know what I mean? And like you said, going into it, we all knew that, you know, we had to, you know, win a game or two to solidify our NCAA, you know, uh, health and everything like that, our chances. But um, that that just was my mindset, man. And, you know, from, from the season, you know, we have certain games that we pulled off. We had upsets that we had. So, you know, you have your confidence working on that end because you know you can get it done. Right. But, you know, really, you know, it's all about just putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And, you know, and the biggest thing that, you know, I've always had to really uh, to really battle with is, is, is understanding how to be a leader. And, um, you know, a lot of people lead in different ways. And, uh, you know, I, I just believe that it's my calling not to really lead by by talking because, right. you know, we all have a different way of how we view things. And, you know, some people right. like, man, you know, we, we, we like you talk because you can hype everybody up and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I've tried to do it, you know what I mean? But you might be, it's like somebody that's, you know, kicking the freestyle is going to come off whack. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, so I don't even, you know what I mean? I just learned, you know what I mean? Anytime I've ever had success personally is when I've, you know, just, just focus in on what I got to do and it's like playing cards and just seeing how it's going. You know what I mean? It's so like you said, my mindset going into that was, you know, it was no pressure for real. You know what I mean? Just come in and just just have faith. Like you said, I was into the Bible and, you know, just, just everything, man. Just, 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 just really being thankful for the opportunity. You know what I mean? And I just feel like that's pretty much, it's like they say, let go and let God, man. So right, that, right, that was right, right, right. mindset right there. I won't think about too much or nothing. Hey. I mean, I talk about this. Some all the other guys talk about this, man. And I mean, even Coach Williams was talking about it. Man, that NC State game, bro. We down mm -hmm. 20 at halftime. And that second half, bro. <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, you you know us in the locker room, man. We like, we we know what we could do, but man, I heard the fans was leaving. They are in the parking lot. Mm. And they see you know. JG just getting loose. <laughs> Johnny JG getting loose. So what was that? What was that like, man? Because honestly, bro, our whole mindset was like, just giving the ball. Cause you wasn't, you wasn't, you literally wasn't missing, man. And it was just like, man, it was, it was being I was on the court. So it's tough, man, because you on the court, but you 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 can't be a spectator, but you you watching it all happen at, at the same time. So like what was that? I know you say using the zone, man. So I mean, I'm pretty sure that still was it too, but like knowing what you did that particular game, bro, like you, like if you don't do that, we might not win that game. We more than like, we probably don't win that game and we don't go, we, this, the history changes. So how, how, what was it like? And how does it feel knowing that? I don't even know how you look at that, but I just want you, I, I want to know your thoughts. I'm pretty sure everybody else want to know your thoughts about that too. Man. I mean, first of all, thank you. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, it's just like one of those moments when you know that you're in a moment, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, like if you go to the line when the game's on the line and you got big free throws or you got a big shot or whatever and everything kind of just, this is the moment, you know what I'm right. saying? And, uh, you know, once again, you know, one of the biggest, I ain't gonna say dichotomies, I'm thinking of the, you know, the thing that kind of just don't go with each other is my ability to to score and play a position that you know offensively I was more like a two guard as far as you know with my right. my one on one skills so you know playing point guard that's always a battle to think right. you know should I score you know just playing the point guard position right. so when you get into a position where 
you know, we came at halftime and, you know, coach was just like, anybody got more in the tango, you know what I mean? It's time to step up. You know, you got Coach Dickinson with his, you know, you know, all up in everybody, but he's not Coach D was. You know right. what I'm saying? Y'all play like whatever. You know right, what I'm right, right. So, you know, it just, you know, for me, it was a place of comfort because, you know, one thing that I've always been able to do for good or for bad is to block out what people think and what people say or whatever, because I just was raised that way. You know what I mean? Right. So some people look at it as weird. Some people look at it as however you want to put it. But to me, I just feel like, you know, what people say doesn't even affect me. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. and so that's kind of what it was. It was like, I just went out there like it was, it wasn't in the score on the clock. You know what I mean? Like you letting us just go hoop and play. Cool, you exactly. know what I mean. So exactly, that that was my mindset to be honest with you, and and that's what it was, man. It, it was like, <clears throat> coach, like that that weekend, man. Like obviously we ran the flex the whole season, but I think a little bit, um, right close to to the tournament time, that's when he kind of just let us do the. I think it was a four hour one in. Mm-hmm. Had Jamal on the inside, and we kind of did four hour one in. Mm-hmm. I guess he saw it work, and he was like, yeah. "All right," and and that's what kind of helped us, you know, get past. It. They didn't helped us along the ACC tournament. But then now you get to, now we're in the championship game. Now it's something different now. Now we've kind of, we kind of already solidified ourselves for the tournament. Now right. it's, now we're playing against Duke. We just beat Wake Forest with Chris Paul and them, just beat Judas Hodge, number two. Now we, at number one, playing against Duke, who everybody always want to see the Duke and Merlin games. Right. Now we got to, now we got to them in the chip. Run through your mind that, that process and then now we get going to overtime and, and, and it's a still a tight game, but JG do what he do best. So what, what like what was that whole thought? No, we're in the chip now on big screen, man. We're on we're on the big stage now, man. We about to make history. What was I mean, we didn't know that. I didn't I didn't know that, you know, but you know, because we kind of like tuned the whole, you know us, we kind of like tuned the whole outside out. Like we were just like in the, like you said, just in that zone, man. Like right. all right, we just gonna focus on everybody in this locker room and we just go out here and do what we could do. What was that like in regards to like your mindset and seeing everything unfold, even until you know overtime, and then obviously you know what happens. So, I mean, honestly, you know, a lot of times, you know, like people say, you know, you say like, oh, you know, you you play well and stuff like that, and you know, I say thank you to that to people right. because I'm just like, you know, as an athlete, you know, or anything, all you want is you know people to say. You know, I appreciate the the efforts that you gave or, you know what I mean, the memories that you gave or right. whatever, your contribution. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, that's that's cool. But the thing that was going through my mind, it was a beautiful thing to really see us hit our stride at that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just was happened to be the one that was uh, that had a hot hand at the time. And, you know, you learn this playing point guard early. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's been games where you were hot and I'm going to keep coming to you because, you know, I'm going to get my sister. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So, you know, I just, I was able to identify that, you know, it's just the matchups. And then when we went to that four out and we were going, you know, that played to my strength because I was always, a, you know, that's the way I played since I began, since I first started playing basketball. Right. Since, you know, rec league when my dad was a coach and I was five years old, you know what I mean? I was the point right, guard. Right. I always had the right. ball in my hand right. and always everything was off the bounce. You know what I'm right. saying? So to go to college and play different styles, we're playing the flex and, and it taught me a whole different offense, you know, so how to feed, probably feed the post and feed yeah. the, you know, the duck in man and how to, you know, read a play if you pass the ball and how to move without the ball, which really to make you a better basketball player, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But, um, like I said, we went back to the four out thing. Now it just put me in more of a comfort zone as far as, you know, offensively. And uh, I just felt that it was my duty because everyone was playing so hard. You know what I mean? Right. We were fighting, clawing, scratching. We were all in unison on right. defense and offense running our plays. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, you know, basketball, if you run a beautiful play and you get a beautiful shot, you know what I mean? An open shot. Like, yeah. it's, it's everybody looking at it, man, please hit this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, That's right, how right. the game is played. You know what I'm saying? And right, it was big right. guys doing big things. I mean, you know, it just didn't matter what happened. We just, you could just feel it. And we could all, we were all playing off each other. Like, you know, we got the will to win. And we're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's that's how I felt about the whole